So uh, here we are now, uh, some six, seven months into uh, what we now describe as the COVID-19 world. Uh, what's, uh, what's that been like for, for yourself and, uh, and for uh, the hospitals in the Calgary area? Uh, it, it's been, a, as you say, a very interesting time. It's, uh, I, I think it, uh, it tested a lot of the, the, uh, uh, the, the personal fortitude and, the, and the, uh, the structural fortitude, I think, of the, of the, uh, of the healthcare system. And uh, uh, obviously, this is, we never had anything like that before or this before. And uh, from a personal sort of view, it, uh, of course, I have children. And you know, when you have children and they uh, suddenly are not at school or, or, or they're, they're, they're not able to go to work and uh, my children are older. And so it, it actually disrupts the normal fabric of life in, a, in quite a profound way. Uh, and, that, and then you superimpose that. And, and, and for, of course, for physicians that have younger children, it, it was quite challenging because, of course, uh, all of the healthcare, well, pretty well everyone, uh, if you needed to go into work and, uh, and you had young children, it became very challenging. And, uh, and so that, that was sort of a side of, of the uh, pandemic that people talk about. But I think maybe, uh, it, you know, when we think about how we're going to address these sort of things in the future, there has to be some way to make sure that the people who are on the front line, no matter what they do, uh, uh, the people that have to go to work at least have some capacity to have people look after their kids, so they're not worried about uh, all of the risks of going to going to work, but also the risk of leaving their children uh, at home, maybe with someone that they that they don't know very well or whatever. Or you're trying to call up friends, you know, call a friend sort of thing. Uh, yeah, but so, did any of that happen ad hoc? You know, were there were there things you were able to do on the fly to you know kind of accommodate childcare? Yeah. So for me, again, that wasn't an issue, but uh, because yeah. my kids are older, but uh, uh, in fact, they would be the ones potentially looking after other people's kids. But, uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I, 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 that was a big struggle. And uh, and I think there was a little bit of, of that going on. But uh, I think it, because it came on, you know, relatively suddenly, if people hadn't really thought what would happen if we actually, you know, have to go to work and we, and we our childcare is gone. You know, and, uh, and and so I don't think most people have really thought through, and they always thought, well, maybe if if our if we don't have childcare, that it, like in a non-pandemic circumstance, then you can always usually temporize because there's other things you can temporize with or friends or whatever. But if yeah. everyone's in the same boat, there's no you can't turn to anyone because everyone's desperate. And so it was it was really that was quite challenging, and it's an ongoing issue because of course everyone's worried about the second wave, and now they're thinking, you know, what what can we do to try to prepare ourselves for that? And so you know that from a personal point of view I, I, and from a, a divisional personal point of view I think has, has been quite challenging and it's ongoing um, uh, from a from a from a uh, uh, a work point of view of course it, it re it caused restructuring of, of everything we do and essentially they they uh, they took all of the services that are considered to be non urgent non acute care and 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 Basically, st- shut them down because they were focusing on on the mathematical modeling, which was, you know, to be totally honest, was very frightening. And uh, certainly, the modeling in Alberta, uh, it was very concerning that the system was going to be overwhelmed if the if the models that were actively uh, w- being sort of reported from Italy came came to fruition. Uh, then it was going to be a nightmare. And uh, and so, you know, thank goodness that didn't happen. But we needed to be prepared for that. And I certainly think in Alberta. Uh, they were they, they they really got on top of it, and I have to give Alberta Health Services credit. They they really took it seriously, and they reorganized. and uh, And I think from a COVID point of view, we were we were ready for the uh, for the onslaught as much as we possibly could be. Uh, the problem, of course, is uh, is that. Um, the onslaught, well, not problem, but I guess the good thing is that the onslaught didn't really happen quite like we thought it would, really and because Albertans um, really were were quite. Uh, they actually. Follow what the government said, you know, and they said, you know, when they said social isolate, and they did. They actually, they, they, the streets were empty, and you know, people didn't go to work, and uh, and so you know, we turned the curve quite quickly in Alberta, and, and and I think it was because of that that sort of community spirit of of just doing the right thing. And I think Canadians probably have done that, which is really quite impressive, actually. And I think when you look at how we've done on the world world stage, I mean, it's, it very it makes you very proud to be a Canadian. I think we we've, we've done a great job. The problem, yeah. of course, that we that we that we 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 now are left with is we 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 took all of this of our of our infrastructure to focus on this pandemic and try to make sure that we kept everyone we possibly could uh, alive or healthy who was who was going to be getting COVID. Uh, 
unfortunately, what that did was that actually, when we canceled all of these these uh, more elective things, I think that we're we started to see that first of all, mental health issues have been 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 a big problem, and 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 uh, a rising use of alcohol, you know, uh, uh, rising instance of depression. I think it's very hard to lock people up for you know for four to six months. Say, don't go out, don't socialize. You know, if you socialize, be six feet apart. I mean, it's really not the human way, and and, and so yeah. I think that's been hugely problematic. And then of course. All of the all of the procedure driven things like surgery and GI, uh, where you're where you're doing these procedures you know, often to look for, to cut cancers out or look for cancers or um, if you can't do that, then you're always worried that that people that are have been slotted I guess as semi routine or whatever. Um, well, if they happen to develop a cancer, of course, that's 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 not routine, and uh, and so we're, we're now trying to go through our backlog of cases, and you know, it's it, it's going to be uh, interesting to see what the impact is being outside of COVID with regards to diseases uh, that that really were 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 had to be moved for the COVID epi- uh, pandemic, and uh, and couldn't necessarily fall into the normal patterns of the healthcare delivery that we normally give, and, and certainly. Uh, from my own personal experience, there was people that I would call uh, who, were, who were at home and they were obviously very ill and uh, and uh, they didn't want to go to the hospital. And, and you know, you were there essentially begging them, saying, I'm going to call the ambulance right now. Don't call the ambulance. I'm going to call the ambulance. So wow. those kind of discussions, right? And uh, so that that's a very different scenario than what, what it used to be. And, uh, and, uh, and it's going to take a while, I think, for people to get over that. Yeah. That fear, uh, you know, and, and so it's, I think people are coming out of it now. But it, you know, it's 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 a it's a it's a very interesting study of human behavior, and uh, and you know, you want to make people, you know, do the right thing, but you also you have to be, able, you know, there's always this trade off of causing a fear that sometimes can can be hard to overcome when you want to come out of the COVID uh, pandemic. 